They may be Idaho's tallest mountains, but many would be hard pressed to find them on a map. To most of us, the Lost River Range has remained in the shadows, ominous and brooding, waiting for that precise moment when their fury can force us to pay attention. A mountain range still growing by fits and starts, as evidenced by the 1983 Bora earthquake. But those who live in the valley created by this upheaval speak of these mountains in glowing terms. They're so majestic. These mountains draw you home. I mean, there's other mountains, but not like these, not in my mind. These 12,000 foot peaks have become a way for some to test themselves in almost superhuman ways. Peak number two. After 24 hours. <laughs> In the nearby towns of Mackey and Chalice, the struggle continues to succeed in a fast-paced world without losing what so many appreciate. As a local, I don't really mind the influx of people once in a while, but I don't want to stop white, and I don't want it to change, you know, too much, because that's what gives us our uniqueness. We'll never have a main street full of appliance stores, clothing stores. They'll never come back. But if we can just hang on to what we got, that's the key in my opinion. Outdoor Idaho visits a part of the state that in many ways still resembles the Old West, the land of the Lost River Range. Presentation of Outdoor Idaho is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore and Bettis family legacy of building the great state of Idaho, and the Idaho Rangeland Resources Commission, sustaining and enhancing Idaho's rangelands through public education and the creation of collaborative partnerships by the Friends of Idaho Public Television, by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by the Idaho Public Television Endowment. Primitive, rugged, stark and steep. At first glance, the Lost River Range can seem a bit unsettling, especially if you're looking for a family-friendly vacation spot. The 75-mile front of primarily sedimentary rock is a complex range, fractured, folded, vaulted, with imposing cliffs and vertical ramparts. Before it began uplifting, this was all an ancient sea, which is why you can find 300 million year old fossils within 10 feet of the top of massive Mount Bora. Geologic forces have definitely uplifted this western side much more than the gentler eastern side. Oh, this backside still has imposing peaks, but it also has mountain lakes and healthy meadows and miles and miles of bad road. The Big Lost River flows through this basin, eventually disappearing into the porous basalt rock of the Snake River Plain. And it's the river that gives the range its name, because there's certainly nothing lost about these mountains especially if you travel along Highway 93, connecting Arco, Mackey, and Chalice. This range can seem so harsh, ominous even, but it's where many go to test themselves among these 12,000-foot peaks. In fact, seven of Idaho's nine 12,000-foot mountains are right here, and they are still growing. That's because the Earth's crust in this part of the continent has stretched and broken into mountain blocks that create basins and ranges. One geologist compared it to rows of closely spaced dominoes that are pushed over. In other words, this is an active range, a euphemism for earthquakes. There's been continuous earthquakes probably every couple thousand years. 
and just continuing to drop this valley down more and bring those mountains up even higher. The extent of this basin and range province is immense. Just in Idaho alone, these north-south oriented mountain ranges, separated by flat valley floors, include the Beaverheads and the Lemhis, and next to them, the Lost River Range. Every block that sinks due to stretching has a small range on one side where that rotated block is tilted up a bit. That would be the White Knob Mountains. Then on the other side, we have a great fault scarp and imposing high mountains, such as Bora Peak, and a flat valley floor in between where the erosional debris pours in and makes a flat, elongate valley floor. A lot of geologists think there's a connection between what's happening here and what's occurring directly under Yellowstone National Park. Perhaps a chocolate analogy is in order. In this case, our chocolate is the North American continent. That Yellowstone hotspot is basically this big Bunsen burner or candle kind of lighting this chocolate bar on top of it. And so as Idaho and the North American plate are moving to the southwest, just progressively moves all that magmatism and that volcanism farther to the northeast by weakening the crust and then allowing that basin and range extension to propagate to the north. On October 28, 1983, at 8.06, just after breakfast, residents reported hearing a terrible roar. The ground began to tear, trees whipped back and forth, and large rocks shook loose from the nearby mountains. The earthquake originated nine miles deep, and the intense force thrust Mount Bora several inches skyward. The valley dropped more than a foot in places. That 30 to 45 seconds of ground-shattering violence did extensive damage in Custer County, and it took the lives of two young children heading to school when a storefront collapsed on them. Today, this 22-mile-long fault scarp at the base of Mount Bora is the grim reminder of that awful day. Scientists may have gotten better at predicting these quakes, but hardly on a timetable that works for anyone. Will the earthquake occur tomorrow or in 10,000 years? No one really knows. But they do know one thing. The area around Chalice is becoming increasingly more active. In the past five or six years, there's been swarms of earthquakes near Chalice, which is pretty interesting. And so we think that there's probably gonna continue to be earthquakes to the Northwest along this fault zone. But as you go farther to the Southeast toward Arco, this fault zone becomes less and less active. This remote land of towering peaks and seismic activity may not be for everyone. But for those who live and work and play here, the reward is a freedom and independence that may not be possible in most parts of the West. I would say that we're blessed to be a part of this country. And we're kind of tucked up here in the middle of nowhere. Kevin Donahue has deep roots in this valley. His great-grandfather settled here from Ireland. His grandfather was born in a log cabin near here, as was his father. We've been here a long time, and we take a lot of pride in that. A lot of history here, a lot of history. Donahue's life in this valley has not been particularly easy. He had challenging medical conditions as a child and has had several run-ins with cancer, as well as a serious heart condition. Rodeo mishaps with horses and bulls beat him up and left him temporarily paralyzed with a broken neck. More than once, doctors gave up on him. The last time they sewed me up and said, just need to go home. You're not gonna make it. And I came back to the ranch, here where I am today, and I outlived all them guys, all those doctors. I've never been one to give up, and I've had opportunities to give up several times, when you leave this world, all you have is your honor and how you applied yourself through adversity. That's my opinion. And I always want to be remembered as he never quit. That could be the motto for much of the Lost River Valley. The toughness, 
of this community is what I appreciate the most. And the people in it, no matter what's happened to us, we persevere, literally. Donahue saves his concerns for his town, Mackey, and especially for the younger generation. It's so hard for young people to stay here and make a living. It's so difficult. We don't want to be Boise or Idaho Falls, but just so that the young people that do want to stay here can make a decent living and grow up here like I did. Donahue considers himself lucky, but readily admits that ranchers like him are a dying breed. It's the kind of work that is so fulfilling. I don't care if you're building fence, irrigating the pasture, moving your cows, calving. My middle daughter and I was up on the slough getting cows off from my cousin. It was 27 below, it was Christmas Eve. She said, Dad, what are we doing up here? I said, we're enjoying life. We're enjoying life. So look at that mountain. And I mean, it was cold, wind blowing. You know, but gosh, those are memories she'll never, ever forget. An amazing lifestyle. These mountains, to me, they're so majestic. These mountains draw you home. I mean, there's other mountains, but not like these. Not in my mind. 